Give all the glory to God. Amen. Thank you. So there's no there's no song prepared at all. So we'll just go with the spirit. Praise the Lord. I thought you wanted to put some. What happened? Sorry? You said you have a song. You can't find it. No, no, I said. Uh, you mean earlier? Now I was saying I'm I'm trying to put a song on the guitar, like tuning in, you know? <laughs> That's what I meant oh. to say. Like I was trying oh. to tune in. Oh. But as of a song, really, I don't. So. Oh, okay. And feel free, you know, it's the, the spirit where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So don't necessarily have to follow me or, or whatever I sing. Or if you want to sing in the spirit, if you want to sing your own song unto the Lord, feel free. Praise the Lord. If you want to pray in tongues, if you want to pray, you know, whatever, feel free. Orenda la raba mosso
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Glory be to Jesus. We give all the glory. Yes. And so, yeah. This is um, amazing. Praise the Lord. Glory be to you, Lord. We thank you for this beautiful opportunity that you are giving us once again to be here mm. in your presence. And as I always pray, yeah. in the name of Jesus, <laughs> if you're not with us, we shall not go. Be with us tonight. It is you who speaks, it is you, it is you who does, it is you that moves. In you, we have our being. You have our life and our being. In the name of Jesus, according to Acts 17. In Jesus' mighty name, we move and we have our being in you. Oh Lord, speak tonight. In the name of Jesus, we give you all the glory. Amen. 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 Okay, give all the glory to God. So today we're going to address again part three, and I believe it's the final part of Faith to Explode 2024. And uh, the specific subject of the Lord is ministering tonight is how to hear the voice of God and also how to know the voice of God. It's extremely important to know, to hear, and to know, okay? And reason being is because God is a relational God, and especially with us who are image and likeness of God. God is plan from the very beginning was to have a relationship with us, okay? Mm -hmm. And the Bible clearly says that we are his children. We are his true children. And the Lord, in his, in his mind and in his heart, is to have a relationship with us. A loving relationship of a father with his children. The Bible says... Let me just start sharing the screen. Just start sharing the screen. Let's go.
go to Romans 8. Mm-hmm. Bible says, the mature children of God are those who are moved by the impulses of the Holy Spirit. And this is, by the way, as usual, the, the Passion Translation. The Bible says, you, and you did not receive the spirit of religious duty, leading you leading you back into the fear of never being good enough. But you have received the spirit of full acceptance and folding you into the family of God, and you'll never be orphaned. For, he, for as he raises up within us, a spirit join him in saying the words of tender affection, beloved father, beloved father, a spirit join him in saying the words of tender affection, beloved father. For the Holy Spirit makes God's fatherhood real to us as he whispers, into our innermost being. You are God's beloved child. Hallelujah. Lord, let your word, Lord, use use me completely. It's your words. I don't want anything from men. We don't want anything from men. We don't want anything from ourselves. Let it purely be the Lord speaking this word in due season. In the name of Jesus. So, we can see here that we are child children children of god according to romans 8 and also since we are um, oh sorry robin um yes. romans 8 verse 4 14 sorry 14 to 17. the bible says since we are his true children we qualify to share all his treasures for indeed we are heirs of god himself and since we are joined to christ we also inherit all that he is and all that he has we will experience being co-glorified with him provided that we accept his sufferings as our press praise the lord and the bible says that i am convinced that any suffering we enjoy is less than nothing compared to the magnitude of glory or beauty, splendor, or perfection that is about to be unveiled within us. Praise the Lord. So let's go now to John 10, 27. And this is where we begin to understand The relationship between fatherhood, hearing the voice of God, knowing the voice of God, all right? Because everything has a foundation. Without a foundation, a building cannot stand. Without a foundation, a kingdom cannot stand. Without a foundation, a marriage cannot stand. Without a foundation, nothing stands. Praise the Lord. Bible says, my own sheep, will hear my voice and I know each one and they will follow me. My sheep will hear my voice and I know each one of them and they will follow me. There's something very interesting here. He says, my own sheep will hear my voice. All of us, and on verse 26, he says something very interesting. Yet you stubbornly refuse to follow me because you are not my sheep, as I've told you before. My own sheep will hear my voice, and I know each one, and they will follow me. And in verse 28, I give to them the gift of eternal life and they will never be lost and no one has the power to snatch them out of my hands hallelujah amen so my sheep my own sheep will hear my voice this is what the lord says you will hear his voice no matter what if you are born again you will hear God's voice. There's no such a thing as I cannot hear God's voice. 
they will hear it. Now, what happens is the lack of knowledge, is the lack of knowledge thereof that makes people confused. There's a few misconceptions about the voice of God, which are basically, some people believe that God does not speak today which is complete utter nonsense okay god is the same yesterday today and forever he does not change if he spoke yesterday he still speaks today and he'll be speaking tomorrow mm -hmm. one of the reasons why one of the reasons why people think they do not hear the voice of god is because they do not know it and this is where the, the relationship comes into play. The relationship that we develop with God, with the right principles, will make us know the voice of God. And why is it important to talk about this when it comes to faith to explode in 2024? We will understand as we unroll or unpack this thing. My own sheep will hear my voice, and I know each one, and they will follow me. So, the sheep follow the shepherd. Yeah? And there's a relationship, very powerful relationship between us and the shepherd. And I just want us to go to Psalms 23, which in a few minutes, by the Spirit of the Lord, you will know how to hear God's voice and you'll know his voice. It's just a small process that you need to go through and then you will know his voice for the rest of your life. Amen? Amen. You'll never be confused if God is speaking or not. Let's go. The Bible says, Yahweh is my best friend and my shepherd. Yahweh is my friend. I'm getting a message from Sister Judy here. And I'll just send a link to, to Judy. She's asking. If you guys don't mind real quick, I'll just send it over here. And she's trying to join. Copy. Close the door, please. What is it? Bible says, Yahweh is my best friend and my shepherd. I always have more than enough. Okay? Which means, according to the study here, and it's very interesting, it says, what a wonderful declaration over your life. To never be in lack, always possessing more than enough. Our God meets our emotional, physical, and spiritual needs. Okay, more than enough. Okay, and he offers a resting place for me in his luxurious love. Huh. And something very interesting that I read the other day in the study here is he says, in his luxurious love or in greens or in spring green meadows, okay, a good shepherd knows where to pasture his flock. These green meadows would be a resting place free from all fear. Yeah, the Greek verb to love is agapao, which merging towards the concept of concept. Ago means to lead like a shepherd, and pao is a verb that means breath. Love is a me? No, 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 resigning. So Bible goes on to hear, say, his tracks take me to an oasis with a quiet brook of bliss. Where? That's where he restores and revives my life. He opens before me the right path and leads me along in his footsteps of righteousness so that I can bring honor to his name. Even when your path takes me through the valley of deepest darkness, fear will never conquer me. For you already have. Your authority is my strength and my peace. 
The comfort of your love takes away my fear. I'll never be lonely, for you are near. You become my delicious feast, even when my enemy is there to fight. You anoint me with the fragrance of the Holy Spirit. You give me all I can drink of you until my cup overflows. So why would I fear the future? Only goodness and tender love pursue me all the days of my life. And afterward, when my life is through, I'll return to your glorious presence to be forever with you. Yeah. So here we can see clearly that why Yahweh is our best friend and my shepherd. Right? And I always have more than enough. And then there's a whole sequence of things that are happen where he offers us or he leads us, right? In another version. And there's a whole sequence of things that happen in our everyday life where the Bible is clearly saying that he's our best friend and our shepherd. And the Bible also says that he, he, he will be with us until the end of time, right? So it's extremely important to establish this. God is with us and we can hear his voice, okay? There's a lot of misconceptions about hearing God's voice that bring a lot of confusion my rest is short once you understand the basic principles okay then the rest then that word will carry you okay that root will carry you which is the word right so let's go now to hebrews 4 12. And we will now just demystify a few things and everything will be clear from there. And you'll be able to completely distinguish God's voice, the devil's voice, and your own mind. It's very simple. Bible says here, Hebrews 4.12 we have the living word of god which is which is full of energy like a two-mouthed sword it will even penetrate to the very core of our being where soul and spirit bone and marrow meet it interprets and reveals the true thoughts and secret motives of our hearts hmm. just the first by itself will will remove 80 percent of the problem because the Bible says that the word of God is like a sword and it penetrates to the very core of our being, where soul and spirit and bone and marrow meet. So the word makes a clear separation between spirits and soul. Because we need to be extremely careful. Sometimes we are very, uh, you know, passionate about things and we are very, you know, involved in certain things that we need to be careful if we do not involve our soul too much because sometimes the holy spirit because we are so passionate about certain things and about certain decisions that we have made the holy spirit sometimes is not able to override that and tell us his will because our soul has gained the grip to a certain extent that we are not able to distinguish. And we think that it's God think, speaking to us. Ah, I'm there praying and I, oh, oh, it's God speaking to me. And, and in reality, it's your soul that is feeding you certain things. Okay. And because of that passion and your soul involved into that, the Holy Spirit sometimes is not able to override that. And this is why it's important to establish that the word of God is what's going to make the difference between our soul and our spirit why does the word of god make the difference because once the word comes there's something that the word says there that he has the ability to interpret or discern the thoughts and secret motives of our hearts so the word of god will give us the ability to discern between the two that's what happens it auto, it's something natural that as we spend time in the word, we spend time 
meditating, this is what's going to happen. And what happens is we compare what we are hearing to the word of God. All right. This is what the Holy Spirit develops in you. Okay. This is like an exercise. You spend time in the word. And the word will create certain mechanisms within us that will then be activated when something speaks. So that means, for example, if I'm hearing in my mind something in the lines of, oh, and it seems like a sweet voice and whatever, you know, <laughs> there's people, they say, oh, uh, if you hear a sweet voice inside you, it is most probably the Holy Spirit. It might not be. Because, and this is what the Lord will speak to us tonight. We need to be extremely careful because the spiritual world, it's complex, but at the same time, it's simple. What do I mean by this? If we, don't, if we are not on the right side and we're not applying the simple things that God calls us to be at a level of a child of five years old, because we need to understand the kingdom of God has to be simple as for a child. Anything that is taught needs to be very simple that a child of five years old can understand it. So we need to be very careful in the sense that if we do not apply what is simple according to the kingdom of God, we'll find ourselves in a situation when these things can become very complex. And that's where the confusion comes because people, they, they come up with all types of techniques when in reality, you need to just to stick to the script, okay? <laughs> you don't go around and invent something that comes out of, I don't know, out of nowhere. And people say, oh, um, if if it's the first, if you hear something, the first voice generally is the first, is the voice of God. What if it's not? Oh, um, if, um, if, for example, you fall asleep, and you begin to hear voices, it's God. What if it's not? So we need to be very careful, okay, in that sense. Because certain things, the more complicated they are, the less there's God in it. I would really write this down. You know, the more complicated things are, the less God's in it. And that applies to everything, okay? If, if we're doing something, and I'm saying things that we do for God, okay? In the world, people are complicated anyway. You already know. But I'm saying in our service unto God, you know, and things that we do in our personal life, if we if, if it's over complicated, chances are God is not involved because God keeps his principles and his word very, very simple to apply, okay? So now, what happens as the word comes, praise the Lord, right? These mechanisms are activated of discernment of interpreting. Why? Because the Holy Spirit it himself, as we feed ourselves in the word, he begins to do that in our lives. And those mechanisms of discernment is when we hear something automatically because we are full of the word, we compare it immediately to the word, right? Our spirit himself begins to unpack things. And he begins to look at it and he sees, I don't see the word here. So it's not from God. I look at a situation and my spirit begins to discern and sense and he begins sometimes to see sometimes to feel that something is wrong it is because the mechanism that the word brings which the word is christ the anointed one he himself begins to do that in us okay now does it mean that if a verse is quoted does it mean that just by, by the fact that somebody is quoting a verse or I hear something in the lines of a verse of the Bible, does that mean that God is speaking? Not necessarily. And I'll show you. 
And this is why that gets complicated, but at the same time, it's very simple. Let's go real quick to Matthew 4. Where Jesus was tempted by the devil. Mm. Now, we need to be careful. Did the devil mention or quoted the scripture? Mm. The devil did quote the scripture, but was it God speaking? No. Mm. Okay. This is where it seems like it's complicated, but it's not. We'll demystify it in a minute. So verse two, after fasting 40 days, the man was hungry. Imagine Jesus was hungry. How can this be possible? <laughs> then he says, the tempter came to him and said, how can you possibly be the son of God and go hungry? Look at that. Just command these stones to be turned into loaves of bread. He answered and said, do you see what happens here, right? When this voice came, the word began to work in Jesus. Boom. This is what's going to happen as we feel ourselves in the word. Jesus. When the voice of our mind or the voice of people, they want to disturb us on the devil, the word will begin to work immediately. This is what happens when we meditate and we spend time in the word. Bible says, he answered the scripture say, bread alone will not satisfy, but true life is found in every word that constantly goes off from God's mouth. Okay. It's not like, what you need to understand in this instance is this. It's not like uh, when the devil comes and I quote scriptures, no. The word will begin to do the work. The word in me, will come up and will respond. Do you get it? It's not like I'm, I have this verse in my mind and I quote it. Ah, Jesus, no, no. The word in my spirit will bring that up to my mouth. And so, then the accuser trans transported Jesus to the holy city of Jerusalem, perched him at the highest point of the temple, and said to him, if you're really God's son, jump. Now look at this, jump and the angels will catch you. For it is written in the scriptures. <laughs> he will command his angels to protect you and they will lift you up so that, so that you even bruise your foot on a rock. Did, the, did this guy mention scripture right now? Is it because somebody or a situation or things that mentioning scripture that it is from God. It is it doesn't necessarily mean that. We need to be careful in that instance. Okay? Because even a liar can mention a truth and deceive you. We need to be careful with truth, the truth, right? Mentioned in the mouth of a liar. It can be deceptive. Once again, Jesus said to him. The scriptures say, you must never put the Lord your God to a test. What happened to Jesus is, as he was fasting and seeking the presence of the Lord, the word was working in him. Matter of fact, he was the word made flesh. That word was working. Because the situation came, the word came out. And this is what happens. That's the mechanism, the mechanism of the Holy Spirit. The word reacts within us. Right? To situations. It gives the sermon, it gives direction. Yeah. And the third time the accuser lifted Jesus up onto a very high mountain range, even higher than where he was before, and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and all the splendor that goes with it. All these kingdoms I'll give to you, the accuser said, if you only kneel down before me and worship. But Jesus said, Go away, Satan, for the scriptures say. Kneel, bef kneel before the Lord your God and worship only him. Why did Jesus just answer with the scripture, with the word? It's because he was the word himself. The word was working and responding. Because that's how the word goes. When the enemy comes, 
to the thieves, the Bible says that Jesus, that the word was made flesh and he dwelt among us and he has shown us his glory. And the Bible says that he was full of grace and truth, which means absolutely free of deception. So when deception came, true responded, right? The word began to work. Yeah. And so we need to be careful when it comes to the voices that are speaking either of people or our mind or the devil. It's not because the scripture is mentioned that God is speaking. We need to be careful. How do I know when a scripture is mentioned that God is speaking? We're going to see now. John 1. Fourteen. Let's go to the Amplified Bible. The Bible says, "And the Word be Christ became flesh, and lived among us, and we actually saw His glory, glory as belongs to the one and only begotten Son of the Father." Verse fourteen, right? One fourteen. The Son who is truly unique, the only one of His kind, who is full of grace and truth. Absolutely free of deception. Is the word that become flesh, Christ in us, the person of Christ, right? There's two things here. There's Christ, the anointed one, mm -hmm. right? and there's also his name. The Bible says in the book of First John that the anointing that is within you will teach you all things, which is Christ in you, right? The anointing or Christ in you will teach you all things, right? Mm -hmm. It will teach you all things concerning life and whatever. Now, there's also his name. When the Bible says, his name in my name you shall do this in my name you shall pray okay is the is the word ammonia on from the greek which means character which in other words there is the word of christ with which is impregnated with the person of christ the anointed one Okay, but also there's this character, which in other words, why did Christ, why did the word react when the deceiver was using scripture? It is because there was two things in play there. There was Christ, the anointed one, the word became flesh, but also there was the Jesus, okay, his name, which is his character. In other words, when and this is as this is a bit more when as god matures you okay i do not know at what stage you are i mean i'm not saying that you're not at that stage but i'm saying for those that watch this later if you're not at this stage okay there is the word christ the anointed one in the name so there is the character and is anointed okay so what happens is that the deceiver came and because even though he mentioned scripture which made part of the personality of the person of christ the word in christ did not recognize the character so it reacted I don't know if you if you understand what I'm saying. Because there's a point where the word becomes so sharp, right? And your soul and your spirit are so much separate. There's a great separation and there's a great distinction 
okay, between spirit and soul, uh, spirit and soul, that what happens is you not only when a voice comes, you not only look for the scripture to analyze that voice, but also your spirit can perceive the character. And this is where now that you are at a point where you distinguish completely what is from God and what is not from God. And there's another step which we'll look at it as well. But at this point, pretty much whatever voice you hear, because you spend so much time in the world and you spend so much time in relationship with God, your spirits will be able to discern what's coming. Then we'll look at the word scripture, the word logos, okay? And then we'll be able to look at the character at the same time. And then automatically, even though it seems from God like what you're hearing there, but then something in your spirit can perceive that the character of that voice is not God. And automatically it switches off that thing. Because there's a lot of voices going on. Even especially now with artificial intelligence. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of things that will come into this world in deception that will be on another level. And so it's extremely important that our faith to explode in 2024 we know how to hear god's voice because we need to implement what he has written about our lives into this realm right and so it's extremely important to distinguish what it is from god and what is not from god the ability to discern and that ability comes as we spend time in the world more time in the world bring time in prayer we spend time you know meditating we spend time you know sharing the love of christ we spend time doing uh being involved in the spirit and the word of god that's when these things happen okay praise god so now so there is the word of god that comes that we meditate and spend time on it automatically what happens the holy spirit will begin to develop certain mechanisms which is discernment the ability to discern the discern in interpret right and also with the ability to interpret comes the ability to to interpret the voice that i'm hearing and its character okay the devil mentioned scripture but his character is deceiving even though it was scripture and we know that the word of god is true the word in his mouth was a deception so automatically the word in jesus began to counter that and did not fall into it amen so let's go now to the last phase which in the end days will be extremely important okay let me have a look here okay uh, okay let's look at up this scripture mm -mm -mm. i do not recall the scripture where it says will be done in a minute so if jesus okay let's go here if jesus uh say that jesus came in the flesh i do not recall the um, There you go, First John 4, 2. <laughs> Let me go here. So this is the, the other way that you discern, and this is one of the most effective 
I would say the most effective way to discern the spirits. Okay. Four two. The Bible says, "By this you know and recognize the spirit of God." Every spirit that acknowledges and confesses the fact that Jesus has actually Jesus Christ has actually come in the flesh as a man is from God. God is its source. Are you hearing this? Let me go to the Passion Translation. Bible says, "Is the test for those with the genuine spirit of God." They'll confess Jesus as the Christ who has come in the flesh. Okay. I like I like it more in the amplified, by the way. But this you know and recognize. You know and recognize the spirit of God. By this you know and recognize the spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges and confesses the, the fact that Jesus Christ has actually come in the flesh as a man is from God. God is its source. So when we talk about the character of a voice, it's the source. Okay? Witches can prophesy. A lot of these witches, they can prophesy. They can tell you details about your life. They can tell you what time you went to the toilet. They can tell you by the second. They can tell you by the minute. They can tell you by the millisecond. They can tell you what time you went to bed. What time you woke up, what time you were, how long you were on your phone, by the minute, by the second, how long you've been pregnant, and all these things. Okay? They can tell you your name, your address, your your previous address, your previous and previous address, the time that you moved in, the time that you left, any of these things. But you know what? The source. It's not because it's true that it's from God. This is what we need to understand. It's not because the situation that this person is mentioning is true that it is from God. But the source, every spirit that acknowledges and confesses, and I'm telling you, if God, one day, you begin to have certain experiences with the realm of the spirit, and the devil appears to you as an angel of light, you, that's how you test, okay? That's how you test the spirit. You actually say to him, confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. If it's a demon, immediately he will not be able to say it. You know why? Because that's the way you test the spirit. You recognize it's the spirit of God. If these voices are saying these things to you, that's how you can test it. That's a way you can test. Say that Jesus Christ came in the flesh. If this is the spirit of God, say that Jesus Christ came in the flesh. Very simple. Okay? So what happens is, as the word of God begins to evolve in your spirit, okay, we're almost done. And the word begins to develop within your spirit. You'll be able to discern recognize why because you will know the character of the word you will know the person of the word yeah and by then you'll be able to recognize what comes from your head what comes from the devil yeah and if by any chance you're not sure just test the spirit and you'll be sure can everybody hear the voice of god definitely Everybody hears it, but not everybody knows it. Even unbelievers hear the voice of God sometimes. But they do not know it because in order to know it, you need to have intimacy okay, with God in order to know his voice. And there's a lot of people, they have gifts, but sometimes God is not speaking through them. A lot of people, they seek the gifts, but they do not seek the giver. They want to be used in all these gifts and all these things, but they do not seek the character of the giver. Because when you begin to develop the character of the giver as well, 
you will definitely hear his voice without an error. You'll never be confused. Okay, so that's extremely important. Three ways. Word, yourself with the word, that will develop me mechanisms. You'll be able to recognize his character and you can also test. One last thing. And since you now know the voice of God by God's grace, Romans 10, 17 can come into play into one different level and we'll be done with this. So the Bible says here, again, 10, 17, so faith comes from hearing and what is heard comes by the preaching of the message concerning Christ. I like it better in the King James. Let's go to King James Version. And the Bible says, so faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Word, the word, as we've mentioned a couple of weeks ago, the word here, the word of God is not logos. It is rema. Logos is the written word of God. Rema is the revealed word of God. What happens is, faith to explode in 20 days ago, because now you know how to hear and you know God's voice, what happens is the Holy Spirit will give you instructions. And those words are his words, which are the words of God, but in Rema form, which is a manifestation of the Logos. Okay? There's no way you can have a Rema word without Logos. That doesn't exist. Anybody that teaches you anything that Rema is more important than Logos, these people are fools. They are fools. They are crazy. Okay? They lost their minds. Rema comes from Logos. Without Logos, there is no way you can have Rema. So it is the word and the spirit, in other words. So you have Logos, which is the word, and Rema is the spirit. So the two work together. And the spirit will speak certain things to you. What you do, you just follow the instructions, and then you implement it. And that's how the explosion will take place in 2024. Amen? The growth where God wants you to go and where he has destined you to be. Amen. Okay. So we're done for tonight. We give you glory, Father God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We bless you. We give you thanks. We believe, Lord, that you are a God who does the impossible and all things are possible with you. Bless each and every one that has joined tonight and those that will watch this later. May you, O oh God, exceedingly abundantly above all that they may ask or think, do according to the power that, work in them, that works in them, that constantly energizes them. In the name of Jesus, do according to your power. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Let me just stop the recording.